This is oral cavity histology through uh, presented by the SC DB with reference Atlas of Histology with Functional and Clinical Correlation by Doc May Kirby. So we start with the introduction of the oral mucosa. <clears throat> so for the introduction of oral mucosa, we need to point out the fact that the oral mucosa is made up of the lips, the cheeks, the tongue, the teeth, and the gingiva. It's made up of the gingiva, the palate, that is the heart and the soft palate, the salivary gland and the tonsils. So now you need to know the next point you have to know is the mucosa, the lining mucosa of the oral cavity. So the lining mucosa of the oral cavity is made up of the non keratinized satisfied squamous epithelium, unlike in the, skin, the skin that was the thin and the thick skin where we had the keratinized satisfied squamous epithelium. Now, there are two distinct layers in the under the non keratinized satisfied squamous epithelium, which are the chateau basale and the chateau spinoso. That's a peculiarity here. <clears throat> the epithelium of the lining mucosa is similar to that of the epidermis of the skin, except that it has neither um, the chateau corneum nor the chateau lucidum, and the chateau granuloso is often absent. <clears throat> so in other textbooks, we have three main layers, which are the chatum basalis, spinosum, and the chatum superficialis. And that chatum superficialis consists only of the chatum granulosum. <clears throat> okay. So the other point, we need to find now the mask, the mastication mucosa. The mastication mucosa is going to be located at the level of the gums, at the level of the palate, and uh, close to at the level of the gums, close to the tooth. So that mastication mucosa is made up of the chatum basale, spinosum, and granulosum, while the other lining mucosa were only made up of chatum basale and the spinosum. Now, specialized, <coughs> so for the specialized mucosa, so specialized mucosa is going to be located in order for you to have the sense of um, taste. You need to know that the taste buds, we have um, different taste buds which constitute of four types of stuff to the taste buds have um, we have papillae inside the taste bud so and there, there are four types of papillae we have filiform, fungiform, circumvalid and foliate papillae so the different structure of each of them are going to be shown later <coughs> so now this is a general diagram of the anatomy of the, the elements inside the oral cavity so the oral cavity is made up of the lips so we have the of the lips as you can see here <coughs> so we have the lips as you can see here so let me just increase a bit the image so that you can see slightly better <coughs> so this is the lips <coughs> so you can see the lips so at this point here we have the vermilion zone so the vermilion zone is the intermediate zone where there is a change from because this part of the lips is made up of this um, satisfied the keratinized um, epithelium why the inside part is made up of non-keratinized epithelium now the intermediate zone of between the keratinized and the non-keratinized satisfied from the epithelium is going to be that vermilion zone and that's usually pink in color <coughs> so we have the vermilion zone here so this is the outer skin so we have the outer skin um, so after the outer skin the inner part we have the labial mucosa and the labial mucosa we said that is made up of only two layers and that those two they are only chatum basale and chatum spinoso so they are so satisfied uh, so with them <coughs> now on the next one we have the muco uh, the, the muco gingiva junction is a junction between the the labial mucosa of the lips and then the, um, the the gum of the lips so because this is the gum so this is the muco gingiva junction so this is the gingiva of the and it is made up of masticatory mucosa now this is your tooth here most probably the incisors 
<coughs> so in this two the two is generally made up of we have different parts this upper part here is called the crown and this lower part here is called the root and then at the um, the junction between the crown and the root we have the neck also called the cervix so generally you have to know the name the neck is similar to the cervix <coughs> now the elements which are found inside the crown what are the organs found inside the crown so the crown is made up of the enamel it is made up of this part here the dentin and then this also which is a dental pulp the dental pulp has a superior part here <coughs> of the crown and then it also has the inferior part of a crown now the inferior part of the crown is still having the dental pulp now at the inferior part also needs to know that there is um, the cementum so and this, this part here is a cementum and also have the periodontal ligament and all that so all that i'm going to explain we are going to see later <coughs> But generally, you have to know that what church of the oral cavity we have the lining mucosa, and the lining mucosa is made up of the epithelium. It is usually the non cratitious fire epithelium, it's made up of the lamina propria and the sub mucosa. Now, the masticatory mucosa it is made up of epithelium, it's made up of lamina propria, but there is no sub mucosa. Now, the next is specialized mucosa. The specialized mucosa are made up of um, the, the papilla. Now, the papilla are different regions that are going to be found inside on the tongue. Now, we need to know that different papilla may contain taste buds or not. The filiform papilla, for example, do not contain any taste bud. Now, fungiform papillae, taste buds are on the apical surface. The circumvallate papillae, it has taste buds on the lateral wall. And the folded papilla, it has taste buds on the lateral wall. <coughs> now, let's visualize the <coughs> histologic section. Let's visualize the histologic section of the lining mucosa. <coughs> Now, for the histologic section of the lining mucosa, this was still the diagram that was seen up here, but this is the histologic section at a very small magnification with the hematocytes and the using stain. So, this is the external skin here. This is the vermilion zone, the transition between the external skin and then the lingual, um, the lingual uh, um, surface of the lip and the muco and the lingual mucosa inside the oral cavity. So this is the labial mucosa. Um, so the labial mucosa, not the lingual mucosa. The labial mucosa. So this is the labial mucosa here, and this is the external surface here. These are the minor saliva. <coughs> now let's visualize now the skin of the lips. This outer part here with the greater magnification. So when you visualize here, you see that the skin of the lips is made up of hair follicles. So we have different papillae. We have papillae here, ridges and grooves. We have hair follicles and attached to each hair follicle you have the sebaceous gland that is going to produce the sebum that's going to <coughs> leak into the hair follicle. So this is the hair follicle here, yeah? this is another sebaceous gland that's going to leak here. We have different sweat glands, these are the sweat glands here, yeah? and depending on if it leaks into the hair follicle or directly onto the skin, it's going to be the apocrine or the eccrine sweat gland. The apocrine sweat gland directly leaks into hair follicle. A kind of sweat gland directly onto the skin. Now we have the epidermis here, and then this is the dermis. So this is the sebaceous, this is the hair follicle. So that is the generally for all the skin. <coughs> now this diagram is the diagram of the vermilion zone. So for the vermilion zone, you need to know that what there is paracreatinine should suffice to have most epithelium at the vermilion zone that's the junction between the skin of the labial mucosa and the la and the skin of the, the, the of the lips and the labial mucosa so there the the, the satisfied um squamous epithelium is going to be paracreatinized which means that what when it's paracreatinized it means that some cells have keratin some do not so that this peculiar characteristic is that <coughs> they have paracreatinized almost epithelial tissue. <coughs> now you realize here that we have all the other glands. So you see ramos here. So these are still sebaceous glands. But the diagram of sebaceous gland here is quite a bit different from the diagram that we have up here. And this diagram here, this is why they are called the four granule spots 
of the of the 40 granules or spot of the sebaceous gland and these are the ducts of the sebaceous gland and if you realize well this sebaceous gland are going to directly drain onto the lip of the uh, of the, the in, onto the vermilion zone they don't have to to be draining first into a hair follicle that's going to leak it into the surface exactly. they are going to directly drain into the vermilion zone surface so that's why they are called for this gland as spot of the sebaceous gland <coughs> now the last one is the labia mucosa <coughs> So for the labia mucosa, it is now it is still made up of the satisfied non-keratinized squamous epithelium, non-keratinized satisfied squamous epithelium, <coughs> and this is the space here. <coughs> it is made up of two main layers, which are the shorten um, basale and the shorten spinosum. There is no shorten granulosum. Shorten granulosum is going to be found at the level of uh, the masticatory mucosa. That is the mucosa which are close to that of the tooth. Okay. Now the next thing is this ducts here. So these ducts here are minor ducts of minor salivary gland, and these are minor salivary gland which are means which are located inside the inner surface of the lips. Is it clear? <coughs> now the next thing that you have to know is the buccal mucosa. So the buccal mucosa, um, this diagram is the part that is lining the cheek. So the inner side of the jaw. So you have the buccal mucosa. The buccal mucosa. This um part here the mucosa we made up of the epithelium first then we have the um, lamina propria and then uh, we need to know that what it is only the mastication mucosa that do not have the um <coughs> the sub mucosa so this one also has the sub sub mucosa and this is the sub mucosa here so on this epithelial surface we have the shortened sperm um, um, the buccal on the buccal surface, you have the shorten basale, the shorten spinosum, and the shorten granulosum on this um, cheek surface. Now we need to know this is part here is the lamina propria here, and then lastly underneath the lamina propria we have the small sub mucosa which is made up of highly um, which is made up of elastic tissue. Now <coughs> the clinical correlation of that is mean is that the lingual and the inferior alveolar uh, nerve run through the posterior groove in the cheek between the tibial mandibular raphe and the ramus of the mandible. This is an important number for local anesthetic block. So when you want to block the, um, for when you want to remove the tooth of somebody, you need to know that the lingual and the inferior alveolar nerve, which comes from the uh, at the branch of the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve, they, they pass posterior to the groove of the cheek, that is between the table, mandibular raphe and the ramus of the mandibular, and this can be used as an anesthetic block. <coughs> Now the clinical another clinical correlation now of the mucosa of um, the, the the oral cavity is that you of the buccal cavities that you can have oral submucous sub fibrosis of the lips. So what is oral submucous fibrosis of the lips? So oral submucous fibrosis is a precancerous um, cancerous condition characterized by a mucosal rigidity due to fibroelastic changes of the lamina propria and the submucosal layer of the line. So normally you are supposed to have elastic fibers inside the lamina propria and the, um, <coughs> the submucosa. Now, as you can see in the diagram that we above, now you see that the, in this case we have those changes and then they are replaced by thick collagen fibers, basically. So in this case, in the diagram that you see here, as you can see atrophy. You first have atrophy of everything, but you have increased collagen fiber, and all this is going to make now the lips to be fibrous and going to be rigid, basically. So this is oral submucous fibrosis of the lips. <coughs> So to see now the difference between the lining mucosa and the mastication mucosa, just pause the diagram and then visualize it. Where you see that the mastication mucosa is mostly made up of keratinized satisfied from the epithelium, as we are going to see later. So this is mastication mucosa of the G at the level of the gingiva. <coughs> so for the mastication mucosa, you need to know that what it is covered. It is covered. It covered the gingiva. Uh, so it covers the gingiva and so this epithelium is made up of keratinized um, epithelium. <coughs> now um as you can visualize here in this diagram this is still with hematosa and neurosin so 
Uh, this year is alveolar bone and here is the dental bulb with here being the tooth. So here is the gingiva. So at the level of the gingiva, we have the free gingiva and this is the attached gingiva. So this attached gingiva is attached to the bone here. This is a free gingiva. So the free gingiva at this level here, we have a sulcus epithelium and then we have the enamel space and then we have the junction epithelium. Now we need to visualize that all this epithelium, which is cool, which is here, is the actually keratinized squamous epithelium, basically. So and this is the mucogingival junction. <coughs> now <coughs> the masticating mucosa of the heart palate can also we can also visualize in here. Here is still made up of keratinized satisfied squamous epithelium. As you can visualize, you have short some basalic. <coughs> you have the short on spinosum, you have the short on granulosum, which is here, you have the short on corneum. That is far off. Now we don't have. We need to first know that what, as we have already seen on the thin skin, it is only the thick skin that has a shadow mucidum. The thin skin and also the mucosa, the line, the masculine mucosa of the oral cavity do not have the shadow um, mucidum. They have the shadow corneum, as you can see here. And all this is made of sheer keratinized satisfied squamous epithelium, basically. So <clears throat> now um, the clinical correlation of mastication because of the heart body is that we have a certain condition of the heart body called cleft palate, and that cleft palate is a bird defect in the in which there is um, fissures in the heart palate. So the is a bifid heart palate. The heart palate is going to be divided in a pair of two, basically. Now, <clears throat> the clinical condition <coughs> of um, the um, mastication mucosa of the um, heart palate and that of the gingiva is going to be nicotine stomatitis. So, nicotine stomatitis is a non um, precancerous, is a non precancerous condition characterized by white lesion in the oral mucosa of the heart palate of the mouth. So, the causes of this condition are associated with long term tobacco smoking, basically. So, how do you visualize now nicotine stomatitis? Generally, you have to know that stomatitis information of the uh, the oral the oral mucosa <coughs> oral cavity. Now, this is the diagram now of um, a patient having a physiologic section of a nicotine stomatitis. So, you can see of hyperkeratosis. You can visualize hyperkeratosis here. Excess keratin inside the epithelial surface. We have acanthosis. We are going to have orifice of the gland ducts. We have minor salivary. So these are the orifice of the gland ducts. The minor salivary glands are increased. We are going to see acanthosis, basically. So those are um, the specialized things. So what is now acanthosis? Acanthosis is generally referred as overgrowth of the shortened spinosum. That is just acanthosis. So when you are being told about about acanthosis, just seen as being on the history section is going to be shown as overgrowth of the shortened spinosum. So you have hyperkeratosis, acanthosis, overgrowth of the shortened spinosum. Um, we are going to have more saliva blood, and the the orifice of the uh, of the glands are going to be increased. Is it clear? <coughs> So now for the specialized mucosa, this is generally the tongue. And let's see now the location of different papillae. Now you need to know that here is going to be the location of the foliate papillae. It's going to be located at the lateral surface of the tongue. The fungiform papillae and the filiform papillae are on, located on the body of the tongue. Then you have the second valley papillae, which is going to be located on this V-shape. And this V-shape um, 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 papillae is going to is what is accounting for the V for the valley. And now there is this one, this um, um, papillae are also circumferential. That account now for the word circum. That's why they are called circum and V for valid circum valid papillae. Now they are lying just anterior to the sulcus terminalis. Now these are the different shots. This is the palatine tonsil. The palatine tonsil is going to be located just between the palatoglossa and the Paratopharyngeal growth. So these are the paratoglossal and paratopharyngeal ridges. So that is where the paratine tonsil lies. Now we have the lingual 
ones on which light just pursue you to the um, the top and you also have the adenoid the adenoid lie on superiorly just um, um, at the level of the heart body so where the oh, the the nasopharynx converts to the oropharynx <coughs> Now let's visualize a different diagram of the with the papillae. So we start with the filiform papillae. So the filiform papillae, as you can see, it has a fire shape, a cone shape or a fire shape filiform, filiform papillae as you can see, fire shape. And then this papillae do not contain any this bone. So the papillae is keratinized, it has a keratinized outer surface basically. So that those are the things that you have to know and does not contain this part made up of keratinized commons epithelium. Now the different one, the next thing that we are going to see now um, is um, <coughs> the fungi form papillae so the name fungi form now account for its dome shape its dome shape is just similar to that of a fungi because those fungi you need to know that fungi have also a dome shape as the upper of it now it is made up of non keratinized squamous epithelium in this case and they have um, these both located at the lateral aspects those are the things that you have to know on the fungi form papillae now the second valid papillae so um so the the the, the taste board are located on the on the apical surface so and then now for the second valid papillae for the second valid papillae i've already told you why it has that name so it is circumferential so at the lateral wall of the second valid papillae now we have the taste board we also have the mood Golf. We have the ducts of the von Ebner glands, the ducts of the von Ebner gland, and then we have the von Ebner down glands underneath here. The von Ebner gland can, can, can be considered as a every gland which are found under or, or, or inside the dome, basically. <coughs> now, the next one is the folate papillae. So, the folate papillae resemble as this so they are located on the posterior and the lateral surface of the tongue this type of ability is not well developed in human but is frequently found in animal and illustrated from the rabbit tongue is it clear so this is a, a, a the image of a fully papillae with the tongue so you can visualize the taste receptors with the taste buds there so this is the particular taste buds and the taste bud consists of basal cells you have those supporting the cells and you have um gustatory and the gustatory cells so those are the three main cells inside the taste buds we have basal cells that can either regenerate to support inside and gustatory cells and gustatory cells are the ones that are going to um to sing to send signal transmission for for um gustation that is this and then you have support inside that is only there to support and produce also mucosa that is going to um <clears throat> mucosa is going to constantly lubricate the tongue basically and don't forget that also have that one in that glass is going to constantly produce the mucus to lubricate the tongue for all the sensation to be felt so these are the taste buds here with the fungi form up here so <clears throat> so from here we are finished with the first part of this um, tutorial which was the oral cavity now we will now continue <coughs> with the teeth thanks for your attention